start spreading the news I'm leaving today I want to be a part of it New York, New York These vagabond shoes Are longing to stray The only way to really understand a city is by walking through it. You cannot ride. When you ride, you go too fast. You miss the life that's going on in the streets. You miss people talking to each other. You miss people sitting in cafes. You can only see them for a second. When I walk, I can sit down with them and I can talk to them. If they're sitting in a park, I can sit ne down next to them on a bench. To see people playing in the city, they're not walking through it. They're in it. They're sitting outside a restaurant. They're, they're playing bocce or any one of so many different games. So in order to fully understand the city, the complete city, you need to walk through it, to stop, to look, to listen, to talk, to think. If you want to see the tourist spots of New York City, then you just go with a tour guide, you get on a bus, and you can ride around Manhattan all day, or you can take a boat around the island of Manhattan. But if you want to see the way life goes on in the streets and, and how the people are going and, and the communities of New York City, you need to go away from the Midtown section. And the best way to do this is by subway. Get on any subway and start riding. And ride a half an hour away from 34th Street or 42nd Street or the Empire State Building and you will come to a community. I don't care if you go east, west, north or south. These are communities. These don't have the look of Soho or NoHo. And if you go further and you go to say 168th Street, you will be in Washington Heights. You will be in a neighborhood that is Dominican and then another 11, 12 blocks to 180th Street, you'll be in a neighborhood that is gentrifying. And then you can go and see the Cloisters, a beautiful Christian retreat in Fort Tryon Park. And you can go further into the Bronx, another borough, and you can see Riverdale, where there are beautiful palatial homes that cost millions of dollars. If you want to see really poor neighborhoods in the Bronx, Take the D train to 181st Street and Fordham Road and you can walk through the Central Bronx, you can see gang areas and if you go to Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, you will come to a place that looks like Rome. This place is magnificent. It's, it, has, it has European style uh, coffee, coffee places to drink, cafes on every block, Italian food of the original kind, great Zagat rated number 27 Italian restaurants, and you'll see some of the older people playing bocce, and you'll have a great time in the Bronx. If you want to see an Irish neighborhood, go to the Woodlawn Jerome section of the Bronx and take the subway. If you go the other way, you will come to Brooklyn, and then you will see Cobble Hill, you will see Carroll Gardens, Park Slope, all gentrified neighborhoods, Brooklyn Heights. You want to see a black neighborhood? Go to Brownsville or East New York, but be very careful because you can get mugged. It's not so safe. If you want to see a neighborhood that is changing from being a black neighborhood to a more white neighborhood, go to Bedford-Stuyvesant, where there are beautiful brownstone homes that rival those in Manhattan on the Upper East Side and West Side. And if you want to go to someplace really interesting, where about 60% of the population is Italian-American, go to Staten Island. That's where their power lies. That's where their political power lies. That's why usually the, pot, the congressmen, the state assemblymen, uh, the borough president are usually of Italian-American extraction. That's where the working class Italians went to move from Brooklyn because they wanted a quieter place. If you want to know where 200 mafioso are probably buried, go to Emerald Street and Sapphire Street and Ruby Street off Linden Boulevard on the border between Queens and Brooklyn. They say John Gotti, famous mobster, buried a lot of people there. 
But don't stay too long. It might not be so healthy for you. If you want the best pizza from the American point of view, go to the Bronx to Crosby Avenue. C-R-O-S-B-Y. You can take the number six train to the third to last stop. And this is what makes New York so special. New York has hundreds of communities, every neighborhood, and only they know it the real way. New York has, has, has different neighborhoods. When people talk about the community they live in, they say, my block. It's not their block, it's New York City's block. My street, it's not their street. And it's not their building. They're paying rent and they're living with 50 other people. But they feel it's their building. Because New Yorkers always want to make a connection. They want to feel like they live in a little village. And they do. New York nights are, are taken for granted here. In a, in, a, in, a, in a city that is a world destination, you could point to other cities. London has a nightlife. Paris, Paris has a nightlife. Uh, um, Rome? Okay, somewhat. But I think New York City was just built that way. In other words, it's part of the custom, but it's also the density of population. It's, it's not, first of all, remember that we have the highest proportion probably of single people in the, of any big city in the United States. Single people don't go home to their families and put the baby to bed. They're out in the street. And when they work hard all day in the financial sector, whatever they're doing, they got to go out at night. So I think one of the biggest contributions is, is the singles. And don't forget, an infrastructure has been built here with restaurants that stay open. But if you go to Queens or Brooklyn, the outer boroughs, you'll find it just like other smaller cities in the United States. Closed down. After, after 9.30, you can't go to a restaurant in Queens or, or in Brooklyn unless they are the areas like Williamsburg that are close to Manhattan. So it really has to do with the singles more than anything else. And the divorcees looking for her wives or husbands, if so. Even though New Yorkers have a sense of living in a community, their neighborhood is called Rosedale, Borough Park, Flushing, but they also know that all these communities are planted inside the borders of the most cosmopolitan city in the world, or one of the most, New York City. They live in a 21st century metropolis that is incredibly sophisticated technologically, that has communications of the most advanced nature, that has a world financial center. And that is the difference between living in a community in New York City and other places in the United States. If you live in, uh, 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 in a small town in Pennsylvania, or Nebraska, or Texas, you can't be in the center of a major city in one hour. Here, you can. My perception of the city is that we have always been a city of immigrants. And the only difference now is that the immigrants come from different places. In the past, most of the immigrants came from Europe. Today, the majority of the immigrants, as we all know, come from Asia and they come from Africa. And they are changing the character and the face of the city in ways that we can only begin to try to understand. Everybody here is new. When everybody is new, nobody is new. And so the idea, there is no stigma, there is no, nothing attached, there's nothing wrong with being a newcomer here because you're joining newcomers from everywhere. Start spreading the news I'm leaving today I want to be a part of it New York, New York These vagabond shoes Are longing to stray Right through the very heart of it, New York, New York. I want to wake up in a city that doesn't sleep and find
top of the heap.